Good morning, agents, and welcome to another daily episode of Target Loot today for October 27th. The series that shows you the Target Loot map, farming tips and tricks, vendor reset highlights, and much more. I'm Agent Shadow, and if you enjoy my content, please consider pressing the subscribe and like buttons below. In the pinned comment, there are links to join my Discord and clan and support my channel, but we'll cover that and more at the end of the video. Let's go ahead and get started with the Dark Zones first, and of course your daily reminder, highlights from the vendors this week, DC, and the New York City Target Loot highlights last. Alright agents, this is just your daily reminder to complete your weekly SHG requisition for your first exotic cache. For your second exotic cache and first named one, you want to run the summit to floor 100 or just join a group that's at floor 100 or close to it. It's, it doesn't have to start from floor 1 to 100 is what I'm trying to say. And then finally, you got your weekly legendary mission. This week it's going to be Roosevelt Island. Honestly, the way I do this, my favorite build is my classic M1A build with focus and perfect vigilance on it. That's just personally what I like to run in a group with this Roosevelt Island mission because it's a long range mission, throw ranger on your classic M1A and it's an absolute beast. All right, agents, now we're over here at the highlights for the dark zones and some vendor highlights for this week. So first off, for the vendor highlights, we do got the mop, and that's over here at the clan. It's actually rolled pretty high. I think all I would re-roll is the shotgun damage to max, you know, 15% shotgun damage. Now over here in DZ West, there's nothing particular to farm for. There's no DZ exclusive is what I mean by that. But there is, at the DZ West vendor this week, the Death Grips. It's rolled with 117k armor, armor on kill at 10%, and then status effects. Alright agents, now over here in DZ South, for the pistol targeted loot, of course you can get the DZ exclusive pistol which is called the Orbit and it comes with perfect finisher and I highly recommend farming for that. It's an excellent pistol and it's something to run besides the card custom pistol with that extra skill tier. Otherwise at the DZ South vendor we do got the door kickers knock, it's rolled with weapon damage, weapon handling, and headshot damage. And then finally at DZ East, we got Future Initiative. Now, Future Initiative isn't something that, you know, I would prefer farming for because it's not a DZ exclusive. That's kind of the main reason I go into the Dark Zones is for those exclusives. But anyway, that's pretty much it for the vendor reset highlights and the Dark Zones. Remember, named items at the DZ vendors cost 152 DZ resources. To get those DZ resources, you have to deconstruct the loot in your contaminated bag and then extract them. All right, let's go check out the north side target loot highlights. All right, agents, now we're over here at the north side target loot highlights. So to get this thing started off, we got Camp White Oak, got light machine guns. So the exotic pestilence and the exotic bullet king are two exotics you can farm for on any difficulty. Otherwise, you can farm for a named LMG like the good times with perfect fast hands, the new reliable, the carnage, the slepner or the quiet roar. There's all sorts of named LMGs in this game. We got Hunter's Fury over here at Coney Island Ballpark. Remember, you want to run this with weapon damage, or you can roll complete armor on it. And then crit hit chance or crit hit damage. Just make sure you're at or near the cap for 60% crit hit chance before you start rolling crit hit damage on Hunter's Fury. I have several builds with Hunter's Fury. I'll put one in the top right card now if you need some help with that. And yeah, that's about it for Hunter's Fury. We also got chess pieces at Manning National Zoo, so you can farm for two exotic chess pieces. That would be the Ridgeway's Pride if you've already completed the project, or if someone in your group is already completed it, someone like myself, where I could re-farm for it and then drop it for someone else, and that skips the project that they would have to do. And then second of all, you can of course get the Tardigrade exotic chess piece, which is an amazing support exotic chess piece, so I recommend farming for it if you do not have it yet. We also got Kenley College open for another six days. And then over at the summit, you pick your own target of loot. So just choose what you need to get and then go. All right, guys, let's go check out the West Side Target Loot highlights. All right, agents, we're over here on the West Side Target Loot highlights. Now we got quite a bit of stuff today. Even over in New York City, there's just stuff everywhere. So let's get started off because this video might be a little bit long. We got True Patriot as the gear set at Federal Emergency Bunker. I got one build video with that that I absolutely love. I'll put it in the top right card right now. You mix it with the memento and you can just kind of shred through content no problem. I actually have been running that on legendaries. I've been running it legendary summit, all sorts of just difficult content solo and in group. And it just kind of works all over the place. 
And then we got hardware at Roosevelt Island. Really, hardware is the only thing I use it for is that three piece with uh, two piece Honda U, one piece Wyvernware for the assault turret and striker drone build. But there is several other builds you could use it for, like, you know, infinite, pretty much seeker mines. That's pretty much it, though, I think. We got Petrov at Potomac Event Center. You can go for the contractor's gloves. That gives you 8% damage to armor. I only run this on an LMG build unless you're stacking damage to armor, mixing it with, you know, Walker Harrison Co. or something like that. Otherwise, I would just kind of run it with an LMG build. And then, of course, we've got Sokolov at Downtown West. You do have a couple control points here to farm for today. If you're running an SMG, I always recommend at least running one piece, up to three pieces if needed, as long as you're not running some other gear set like Hunter's Fury or True Patriot. And then over here, we got Grupo Sombrero at Constitutional Hall. Remember, one piece for DPS builds for that 15% crit hit damage, and then two pieces for that 15% explosives damage. You want to put that for an explosive skill damage build for two pieces, one piece for those DPS builds, all red. We got knee pads at West Atomic Park, so that's the Ninja Bike Messenger knee pads, Sawyer's knee pads, and Fox's Prayer knee pads. Now, I did see Overlord, I believe, over in New York City today, so that's what I would recommend farming for for the Fox's Prayer knee pads with that 8% damage to targets out of cover. Otherwise, you can farm West Atomic Park, these several different control points here. If you want to get the exotic Sawyer's knee pads and Ninja Bike Messenger knee pads. You can also run Tidal Basin today for your gear system mods. If you're looking for those 12% crit hit damage mods or those 6% crit hit chance mods, definitely run Tidal Basin today on Heroic. That's where I got all my max mods out, not legendary. I usually got them from Heroic difficulty. If anyone's just wondering how I got those 12% crit hit damage mods. And then Walker Harrison Co. at Lincoln Memorial. If you're looking for that chain killer with Perfect Headhunter, today is a really good day to run this. It's Lincoln Memorial. You can finish this in about nine minutes. It's fast. You got three bosses at the end. You can just clear it so quickly. And you can get as many Walker Harrison Co. pieces you need to get for today. It's just one of my favorite missions to grind. As far as the Matador with Perfect Adrenaline Rush, I believe it can drop from Target Loot Rewards. But please comment below and let me know if you've gotten it to drop from Target Loot Rewards. Because I believe I have, but I haven't farmed Walker Harrison Co. in a long time. We also got rifles at DARPA Research Lab. So you can farm for the Diamondback or Merciless. Those are the exotic rifles. And then of course you can get a classic M1A. Best rifle damage talents on that is Boomerang, Rifleman, and Ranger. Or you can get the Baker's Dozen with Perfect Lucky Shot. All right, that's about it for the west side. Let's go check out the east side target loot highlights. All right, agents, we're over here on the east side target loot highlights. So the first thing I wanted to start this off with is downtown east. We got shotguns. So, of course, you can get the Sweet Dreams exotic shotgun if you need to pick that up. Otherwise, you can get the best three shotguns in the game, which is the mop with 10% armor on kill, the custom M870, and then the Marine Super 90. Now you can get a really good rolled mop over here at the clan. So I would just kind of recommend getting that. Unless you want to farm for something better, try to get a god rolled one. But there is a really well rolled one at the clan, just to remind you. As far as gear sets go, we got Eclipse Protocol at Grand Washington Hotel. Of course, mix that with Imperial Dynasty Holster or the Vile Mask. And that thing's an absolute shredder. I mean, for fire damage builds with the Kim Launcher. You got aces and eights at Viewpoint Museum. Usually you run around three pieces with a perfect headhunter chest piece and two pieces of Araldo holding for headshot damage. We got Foundry Bulwark and American History Museum. That's an armor region build. Usually want to mix two, three, even four pieces of this with two pieces of Golan gear, which you can of course get today at Jefferson Trade Center. That's, you know, our Bellstone Armory. Just mix it with armor region brand bonuses usually or armor rolls. And then Negotiator's Dilemma at Capitol Building Stronghold. This is still a very viable DPS set, even if you're running the chest or backpack or both. I really like Negotiator's Dilemma. I got a double LMG build I'll put in the top right card now that utilizes it, and it is awesome. And then finally, we got Ongoing Directive at Southwest. I would highly recommend checking out Channel Identity. He's an awesome guy, and he just put out this insane bleed build that I would. it's worth watching for sure and it comes with four piece ongoing directive. You can also mix it with Ridgeway's Pride for some more bleed, but there's another variant that he's done that I think is better. So I would definitely go check that out for sure. All right, let's go back to 
the target of loot besides gear sets. We got holsters at Space Admin today. So that's the Imperial Dynasty holster, the Forge holster, and then lastly, you can get the Dodge City holster. All three of those are worth it. Two of them are exotic, and the Forge is a named holster that gives you 50% extra shield health, like a whole extra skill tier worth of health to your shield. Then we got submachine guns at Air and Space Museum. That's the Lady Death, which you can farm for. You can refarm the Chatterbox if you've already gotten it from the quest. If you haven't, I'll put the guide to complete the quest real fast in the top right card now. Otherwise, the two best types of SMGs in this game are the Vector Variants and the MPXs, which I usually roll strained or close and personal on. Usually I'll roll that with the Vector. The MPX has a lot more range to it. And then of course you can get the Dark Winter in the apartment, which are DZ exclusives, but I believe the Dark Winter can drop from Target Loot Rewards. Like I said, please comment below and let me know if you've gotten it to drop from Target Loot Rewards. Otherwise, the two LZs that can the two LZ SMGs that can drop are the safety distance with perfect outsider and then the swap chain, the named MP7. We got masks at Federal Triangle, so you can get the Coyotes mask, the Vile mask, and the Punch Drunk mask with 20% headshot damage baked into it. But if you want the Punch Drunk mask, just farm DUA today. It's Douglas and Harding. So I would just farm that if you just need that Punch Drunk mask with that 20% headshot damage baked right into it. We also got Alp Summit at Judiciary Square. You can get the uh, percussive maintenance with perfect tech support, but I highly recommend getting a chest piece with Empathetic Resolve for a healer build and skipping that percussive maintenance backpack altogether. Usually want tech support on Wyvernware or Hana Yu. And then I think finally we got gloves at East Mall. It's an invaded area, so that's the BTSU gloves. They have a higher drop rate chance when you're you know, fighting the Black Tusk. So just farm these control points here, and I wouldn't doubt it if they would drop pretty fast. I mean, it's invaded. You're fighting Black Tusk NPCs. They have a higher drop rate chance to drop those BTSU gloves. So yeah, that would, today's actually a pretty darn good day to farm for it. All right, let's go check out what we got in New York City Target Loot Highlights, and then I will let you agents go. All right, agents, over here finally at New York City Target Loot Highlights. So the first thing I want to start off with is Providence Defense at Two Bridges. You can farm for the Sacrifice with Perfect Glass Cannon that amplifies all damage by 30%, but it also amplifies all incoming damage by, I believe, 60%. It's an insane amount. I prefer Obliterator Intimidate, but a lot of people still prefer the Perfect Glass Cannon chest piece. As far as gear sets go, we got Strikers at Stranded Tanker. Never would recommend Strikers. Sometimes you can run three pieces for that extra rate of fire, but otherwise I'd never run it. I tried to a long time ago in TU8, maybe even before that, I think it's TU8, and I just, I didn't like it at all. It's not powerful enough, so I just never run it. And then finally, or sorry, secondly, we got Assault Rifles at Financial District. There's so many things you can get that are Assault Rifles. You can get the Exotic Chameleon, which is definitely worth it. You can get the, what is it, the Burnout named FAMAS, the Military AKM named Maniac. You can get the Mechanical Animal of Future Perfection, or just get one of the best assault rifles in the game. The weapon archetypes that are the best in this game will be the FAMAS, the Military AKM, the Carbine 7, the Police M4, and the G36. Like I said, Overlord at Pathway Park, so you can farm for the Fox's Prayer Knee Pads. That's 8% damage to targets out of cover. That's multiplicative damage, the best type of damage in this game. Always worth running with, you know, rifles or long range stuff. Like the, of course, the rifles like an M1A. And sometimes it's just good to run without rifles as long as you have that damage to targets out of cover mixed with 10% from your weapon. We got Badger Tough at Battery Park. That's the Zero F's chest piece with Perfect Unbreakable. Highly recommend farming for that. I got at least one build, probably two builds with that chest piece on. I'll put in the top right card that are highly worth farming for, for sure. And then Bellstone Armory at Wall Street, you can get the Everyday Carrier with Perfectly Efficient, which I haven't personally used, so comment below and let me know if you've used this chess piece and if it's viable at all in TU 11.1. Otherwise, what I have used is the Liquid Engineer with Perfect Bloodsucker on it. I really think that's viable for sure in this game in TU 11.1, but I got it from Season 3 Reward Caches and the Dark Zone. I never got it to drop from the Light Zone. Although it could drop from Target Loot Rewards, I'm not 100% sure on that. If anyone else knows for sure, comment in the comment section below, please. All right, agents. Well, that was the Target Loot for today. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to subscribe and like if you enjoyed my content. If you would like to become a member for support and exclusive perks, you can click the join button below to further support my dream of being a full-time content creator. 
You can also grab some Shadow Gaming merchandise by clicking the link in the pinned comment and video description below. I have tons of items to grab up and lower prices than usual of what Teespring defaults them to. You can also support me on alt tech like Patreon and Subscribestar. But really, if you're still watching this video right now to the end, thank you. That's truly the best way to support me and whitelist me on your ad blocker. Take care, Regents, and be sure to stay tuned for more daily Division 2 content. This is Agent Shadow signing off. I will see you in the next video. Take care, Agents.